Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose alpha plus beta i is a complex number with magnitude 1 whose real part is not equal to negative 1. Then alpha plus beta i is equal to this expression. Now the reason why you might conjecture this is because if you take alpha plus beta i and set it equal to 1 plus i y over 1 minus i y, where y is a real number, then if you algebraically solve for y, you'll find that y is equal to beta over 1 plus alpha. Right. So that's the reason why you might conjecture this. Now, alpha plus beta i is essentially just a complex number in the unit circle, but not at the point negative 1. So if we visualize the complex plane and consider the unit circle, right, alpha plus beta i is just a complex number somewhere on the circle, but not at negative 1. Right, so that's just to visualize it. So now, let's get into proving this fact. Now, to show that these two guys are equal, all we have to do is establish a chain of equalities showing that they're equal. So we'll start out by writing the right-hand side. So let's start out by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 1 plus alpha to get rid of the fractions. And now in the numerator, if we distribute the 1 plus alpha across, we're going to get 1 plus alpha plus i beta. And in the denominator, if we distribute the 1 plus alpha across, we're going to get 1 plus alpha minus i beta. So we get this. But now, to get rid of the complex number in the denominator, let's multiply both the numerator and denominator by 1 plus alpha plus i beta. If we do that, well, in the numerator, what are we going to get? We're going to get 1 plus alpha squared plus i beta 1 plus alpha plus i beta 1 plus alpha plus i squared beta squared. And in the denominator, we're going to get 1 plus alpha squared plus i beta 1 plus alpha minus i beta 1 plus alpha minus i squared beta squared. But of course, we can simplify this up a little bit. In the numerator, we know that i beta 1 plus alpha plus i beta 1 plus alpha is 2 i beta 1 plus alpha. And also, we know that plus i squared beta squared is equal to minus beta squared, because i squared is equal to negative 1. And then, in the denominator, we see that the two middle terms are going to cancel out. But then, we know that minus i squared beta squared is equal to plus beta squared, because i squared is equal to negative 1. So we're left with this. Now at this point, it may not be super clear how this is going to simplify down to alpha plus beta i. But remember, this is not just going to simplify down to alpha plus beta i for any complex number. It's under the condition that the magnitude of our complex number is equal to 1. And by definition of the magnitude of a complex number, this is just square root of alpha squared plus beta squared. And so if we square both sides, we get alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to 1. So we need to somehow apply this fact into our work. Well, notice if we solve for beta squared, we get beta squared equals 1 minus alpha squared. And so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the beta squareds with 1 minus alpha squared. If we do that, we get this. And next, let's just expand out 1 plus alpha squared. All right, let's distribute the minus sign across, and we can drop the parentheses here. And so we see that some things are going to cancel out, and other things are going to combine together. So in the numerator, notice the 1 
and the minus one will cancel out. And in the denominator, the plus alpha squared and the minus alpha squared will cancel out. Now in the numerator, we see that we're doing alpha squared plus alpha squared. So we're going to be left with two alpha plus two alpha squared plus two i beta times one plus alpha. But in the denominator, we see that we have two plus two alpha. So now in the numerator, let's actually factor out uh, from the first two terms. As you can see from the first two terms, we can factor out two alpha. And we get this. But then in the denominator, we can factor out a two. So we're left with this. And now in the numerator, we overall have two terms. And we can factor out a two times one plus alpha, two times one plus alpha from both of these terms. And if we do that, we're gonna get this. So now we see that the two one plus alpha cancels out and we're left with alpha plus beta i. And so through this chain of equalities, we've established that these two guys are equal. And so this completes the proof. Now, not only is beta over one plus alpha a real number that satisfies this condition, but also beta over one plus alpha is the only real number that will satisfy this condition. And what I mean by that is, if alpha plus beta i is also equal to one plus xi over one minus xi for some real number x, then x has to be equal to beta over one plus alpha. It has no choice. The reason why is because if alpha plus beta i is equal to one plus xi over one minus xi as well, then we have then we have that these two guys are equal but this implies x is equal to beta over one plus alpha right you can verify this just by cross multiplying and then setting the real and imaginary parts equal to each other you will obtain that x is equal to beta over one plus alpha in general, if we have the following situation, if a and b are real numbers such that one plus ai over one minus ai is equal to one plus bi over one minus bi, it will follow that a is equal to b, right? We could verify this first by cross multiplying. We get this. If we expand the left-hand side, we get and on the right hand side, if we expand it out, we get this. And I've grouped together the real parts and the imaginary parts. Well, if we set the imaginary parts equal to each other, we get this, but then you just add B to the other side, add A to the other side, you get 2A equals 2B, and that implies A is equal to B, right? And so that's why if these two guys are equal, we have X is equal to beta over one plus alpha. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.